Greetings, servants of the will of the Force, dangerous mercenaries who roam the Star Wars galaxy, and Jedi Knights of the Order, and welcome back to the embrace of knowledge of our vast archives. I have been expecting you. Darth Kray, born Ashurad Het, and Darth Sidious, born Emperor Sheev Palpatine, two of the most powerful Sith Lords to ever exist. Their story spans centuries, and both of them have lived to torment the galaxy for many, 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 many years. Their iron will on the galaxy has proven to be more than most Jedi can handle, being forced and condemned to chaos and into submission by some of the most powerful Jedi alive, including Mace Windu, Grandmaster Yoda, and the most powerful Jedi of all time, Grandmaster Luke Skywalker. Both these tyrannical Dark Lords have led an oppressive regime, with Palpatine claiming such accolades as being the first Sith in almost 4,000 years to dominate the Jedi Order and destroy the Republic, introducing his galactic empire. Kraid's accolades and regime will be even more brutal, as he has subjugated the rule of one Sith, abolishing the rule of two lineage established by Darth Bane a thousand years prior. Kraid's rule of one would truly become the stuff of legends, and would be the most intriguing part of his story when regarding his powers. But which one of these tyrannical Sith Lords, both two of the most powerful Force wielders of all time, prevails as the most powerful Sith Lord? Both of these Sith Lords are among the top five most powerful Sith Lords of all time, Kray and Palpatine. Today we shall be delving into their powers in depth, their lightsaber skills, their potency with the Force, and their other political and manipulative strategies, and determining and deducting who truly is the more formidable opponent to face on a deserted battlefield. Before we begin, I would like to remind you that many of the acolytes and starships that wander aimlessly into our archives and search our vast databases have not actually ascended to the rank of Master. If you do not wish to make the same mistake that these lone wanderers have, you will strike down the subscribe button and ascend to the rank of Master. With that out of the way, brutal Sith Lords, let's begin. Starting off with Darth Kray, born Ashurad Het, he was an exceptionally skilled and potent in the Jarkai style of fighting, the art of using two lightsabers at once. This talent was evident throughout his tenure as a general during the conflict involving the galaxy, the Clone Wars, in which Ashurad Het served as a general, often leading his clone commandos and soldiers from the front lines though the th through the thickest of fighting on the battle. Ashurad often wielded two emerald-coloured lightsabers, even claiming that after he became a Sith Lord, he honed his skills during the Prone Wars and had killed thousands of opponents since the wars. He had also been able to defeat and contend with Orising in a lightsaber duel, while he was still a Padawan learner. An impressive feat, considering his own father, a fully trained Jedi Knight, had been unable to defeat Singh previously. It should be noted, however, that his power was augmented and bolstered by the hatred he felt for Skin for murdering his own father. This proves Het's brutality and allows that he could feel and develop a basic understanding of the ability known as Force Rage, allowing to channel your rage through the dark side to bolster your fighting abilities, allowing him to boost his ferocity and death sing, getting a hand on her neck and knocking her saber away from her hand. Singh, considered to be one of the top 10 best bounty hunters of all time, this was truly an incredible feat. He, while holding back, defeated the Dark Woman in a duel. However, she then subdued him with a sneak attack after the duel was technically formally over. Her intent to make the point about the risks of lowering one's guard after an enemy is supposedly defeated. In the year 30 BBY, Het was able to barely defeat Singh in a furious duel, though this gave into his hate during the battle. A lapse that disgusted him. Decades later, as the Dark Lord of the Sith, Darth Kray, he was able to fully master and focus his usage of Force Rage, such as when he dueled Cade Skywalker, the grandson of Luke Skywalker, and Darth Wyrlock, his second in command who would later go on to kill him. Het killed a crate dragon with a Gadurfi stick, the traditional weapon of the Tusken Raiders, as well as a torch, before he was officially made a Jedi, possibly alluring to his eventual rise as Darth Kray. After jumping from a speeder that crashed through a window, Het non-lethally defeated a terrorist, seemingly without effort. During the Clone Wars, he defeated an enraged and armed with a lightsaber, Anakin Skywalker, one of the most powerful Jedi of all time, while armed with only a Gadurfi stick. Then he made peace with the Chosen One, showing that under his Tusken mask, he was just a human like Anakin. Later, while a part of the Jedi and Clone Force, 
he and his friends and fellow comrades were able to drive off the ambush of separatist droid forces that were led by the Sith Lord Count Dooku and the droid commander General Grievous. His mastery of the Jarkai fighting style saved Tep from being killed in Order 66, allowing him to kill the clone troopers who were sent to execute him. After turning to the dark side, but before becoming a Sith Lord, he had engaged an extremely powerful Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi, who had a few years prior defeated the newly christened Darth Vader in a lightsaber duel by honing his skill in Sarisu. While Het put up a valiant fight and effort against the Jedi Master, he was unable to defeat him and was eventually defeated and maimed, causing the Tuscan tribes that he led to turn their back on him and renounce it. As Darth Krayt, he retained his mastery of fighting with dual blades. A master practitioner of the form of Neeman, his skill with his blades were enough for him to quickly and effortlessly defeat four Imperial Knights with seemingly little difficulty, even despite the Yuzong Vong parasites being well over 170 years old and weighing on his mind. The Dark Lord could use the Force to help him make deadly sweeping motions and attacks that could lower the defences of one's enemy. He was also able to fight the much younger and fitter Case Skywalker in a lightsaber duel and proved to be his superior in it. And he would have supe- defeated him and absolutely dominated the Jedi before being shot in the back by Cade's mother, a selfless act. Darth Krayt claimed that his skills with the blaze were such that he had killed thousands of opponents since the days of the Clone Wars. It should be noted that after his duel with Skywalker, Krayt was critically weakened by the wrong gross and parasites infecting his physical body and was forced to spend time in stasis to heal and recover from them. The Dark Lord was able to hold his own against Carnus Murr, one of the original founding Sith Lords, alongside Saws of Sin and Ajunta Paul, two of the most notable Sith Lords of all time, who was one of the founding members of the Sith Order, supposedly comparable to Darth Sidious, and who claimed to have easily killed other Sith Lords who were stronger than Kray. Kray was able to slay his former right hand, Darth Wirelock, in a lightsaber duel. In his final duel with Cade Skywalker, he proved to be equally proficient with a single blade as he was with two. During this rematch, Krayt proved to be capable of combining his prowess with the lightsaber and his skill with the Force. As the Dark Lord of the One Sith, Darth Krayt was the strongest Sith Lord of his time and widely considered to be one of the most powerful Sith Lords in the Legends continuity. In 40 ABY, the Jedi Grandmaster Luke Skywalker was deeply troubled and concerned with the visions of Darth Krayt as a shadowy figure who seemed at least as ruthless and strong in the Force as the Chosen One Anakin Skywalker, seeming like a Darth spirit on a mission of doom. The Dark Lord was powerful enough in the Force to, that he was able to battle a being as powerful as Avaloth, a 100,000-year-old eldritch dark side abomination and mother of the ones, a group of celestials and force wielders who possessed immeasurable power, though he was assisted by Grandmaster Luke Skywalker, who himself was wary of dueling Crate and Beyond Shadows, even to the point of almost backstabbing the Sith prematurely. Jason Solo believed that if Prey acquired Alana Solo as an apprentice, the crate would become an eye unstoppable force and usher in an appalling new future and tyrannical regime. This is greatly what inspired him to try to conquer the galaxy as Darth Caius out of fear for crate. The force itself was temporarily bent to crate's will. Great had mastered the knowledge of Zozan. The darkness brought on by crate's rise made it harder than ever for Jedi to use the force to, in precognition to sense the future. Krayt stated that he had fully mastered the Jedi and Sith arts. Merely being in the same room as Darth Krayt was mentally painful for Cade Skywalker. All of this power was at Darth Krayt's command, even while he was held back by the infestation of the Yuzong Vong parasites and the wounds Kenobi dealt with him many years prior. His strength on the dark side of the Force was great enough to be felt by every Sith and being in the galaxy. Darth Krayt claimed that after his resurrection, his power on the Force had multiplied four times fold indicating that since his defeat on Had Abaddon, he had grown considerably stronger in the Force than before. The dark side of the Force was said to have been living through him. Claims similar to those to the son of Mortis, the living dark side of the Force had been created and made almost 200 years ago. To live on Krayt's throne world was to forfeit one's soul, and his power was great indeed to those who sensed it. His strength in the dark side was such he could fight and overpower Cade Skywalker, who was armed with a lightsaber, while mostly his usage of the Force alone. Even before turning to the dark side, this man was noted as a powerful and formidable Jedi, as such as by his father. As a Jedi Master, he was considered worthy and powerful. In addition to being formidable, sometimes enraged lightsaber duelist as both Het and Darth Krayt, he was also talented in the other applications of the Force, notably moving things at his will through telekinesis, 
Force Lightning, Communication and Healing. His ability of Force Lightning grew to rival that of Darth Sidious, one of the most powerful Sith Lords of all time, being able to entrap beings within his immeasurably powerful Force Lightning without hurting them. He possessed great skill in telekinesis, showing when he was able to non-lethally repulse a mob of his fellow Tuscans who were harassing Ki-Adi Mundi, a Jedi Master, a feat that impressed him, though it was seen as possibly too violent for the situation. Krayt remained one of the most powerful Sith Lords of all time up until his death in Legends Continuity above Coruscant, where he died fighting Cade Skywalker. Now we will delve into Emperor Sheev Palpatine, widely considered to be one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, Dark Side user of all time and Sith Lord to ever live. Trained to perfection by his master Darth Plagueis, Darth Sidious was considered by many, including Darth Vader, the Fallen Chosen One, and Grandmaster Luke Skywalker himself, to be the most powerful Sith Lord in the entire history of the Order, something he himself firmly believed. Culminating the line of the Rule of Two established by Darth Bane, he destroyed the Jedi Order and abolished the Republic, instituting the new Galactic Empire. His status as such as he had been also been documented within the second edition of an important historical chronicle. Additionally, he was the only Sith Lord in a thousand years to achieve the ultimate goal of the Sith, to purge and eradicate the Jedi Order and bring the galaxy under the rule of the darkness. He was considered the one Force user to have successfully attained the dark side of the Force, exceeding even that of his predecessor in Ulit Keldroma, the best friend and brother-in-arms of Exar Kun. He brought about one of the greatest period and depth of darkness to the galaxy and the Force, until the rule of Darth Krayn, another being who we have discussed on this list, and the One Sith. Despite his frail appearance, Darth Sidious possessed immense mastery in lightsaber combat, having mastered every conceivable form by the time of the Clone Wars. Being a, as a result of his tremendous skill, he effortlessly killed Aegon Kola and Se Se Tin, who were considered to be two of the finest lightsaber duels of their era, each with a single blow. While also an enraged Mace Windu, he easily slew the formidable Kit Fisto only moments later. Although it should be noted, he was amplified and they were stunned by his force scream, an incredibly lethal dark side technique that was able to be used by Sith. He then went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mace Windu, widely considered to be one of the greatest sword masters of all time, even briefly gaining the upper hand, only being disarmed due to further amplification by Anakin Skywalker's fear. Later, Sidious, though confessed and confused by Yoda's sheer skill and power, was able to go almost toe-to-Yoda -to with Yoda himself for an extended period of time in the Senate chambers, but was eventually defeated and disarmed by the Grand Master in the Revenge of the Sith novelization forcing him to rely on the Force for the rest of the confrontation. In addition, shortly after the formation of the Galactic Empire, Sidious effortlessly killed three of the five Jedi prisoners brought before him in a single swift motion with his lightsaber blade. Many years later, Sidious, in one of his youthful clone bodies, engaged and defeated a Grandmaster Luke Skywalker in the Dark Empire comic series in a one-on-one -on -one lightsaber duel in his clone lab on Biss and barely lost to the latter in their second encounter, with Luke slicing off his hand. It should be noted that Luke's victory was also aided by the fact that he was boosted by Leia's Force Harmony, a light side force ability that augmented the strength of others. He was then ambidextrous and could change his fighting style at whim, making him very similar and akin to that of General Grievous, keeping his opponents unsure of what his next move would be. Having fully mastered every single form of lightsaber combat and all their techniques and stances, his capability of using each form equally and effectively was ambidextrous. Sidious drew his opponents in, fighting less than his true capability, then striking the fatal blow when his opponents thought they had the better of him. When fighting at full strength, the Sith Lord was a terrifying opponent to behold. During his assassination on the Grand Proctorate, the speed and ferocity of technique was set so great it appeared as though his victims were dispatched by a phantom. Sidious was an incredibly aggressive duelist and one of the most proficient lightsaber duels and Sith sword masters in all of history. However, this was not his greatest strength. His force powers were beyond comprehensible. In addition to his lightsaber combat skills, Darth Sidious was one of the most powerful force users in all of galactic history. Perceived in the force by his apprentice Dark Trianus as a black hole and void and dark side nexus of the dark side itself, both Luke Skywalker and Dark Vader had likewise had viewed Sidious as having become the dark side's most powerful expression, surpassing that of even Emperor Vitiate, Darth Krayt, and Darth Nihilus. 
Theus' relationship with the dark side was so deep and in depth to the point he had become a possession of the dark side itself, and the dark became a possession of his. Sidious demonstrated his prowess at telekinesis and the force during his battle with Yoda. As an apprentice under Dark Plagueis' tutelage, one of the most powerful Sith of all time, he learned all the known dark side powers of his predecessors in the rule of two lines descended from Darth Bane, and quickly excelled to the point that he soon came to consider himself the Sith Ari, when it was in fact realism Darth Bane. Sidious's mastery over the Force was so immense, having spent decades immersing himself and honing his skills in the many facets of the Force and researching it, which reportedly granted him full mastery over almost all known Force powers related to the Dark Side. He also managed to discover and uncover and master previously unknown techniques lost for centuries, allowing him to create new powers almost at whim. Because of this, he, even at times he wondered if the Force had been so strong in anyone before him. Feeling a monster rising from the core of himself, impatient to unleash it. Shortly after the death of his master, Plagueis, Sears received the most powerful vision from the voices that proclaimed his reign. He considered that the simple act of glancing at him was tantamount to glimpsing the dark energy that bound and drove the galaxy. Even prior to his induction into the Sith Order, his force potential was powerful enough to block out Darth Plagueis while adopting the public identity of the banking clan leader, Hugo Damas mind-reading abilities when they first met, and later able to effortlessly and telekinetically murder his parents, siblings, and their personal guards while he was very young. In 19 BBY, Palpatine was considered by Vader to be so powerful that in Vader's view, at that point, Sidious could only be overthrown by Vader if he had the help of Karnas Mur via his talisman. Mur being a Jedi founder of the Sith, he would later go on to briefly contend with Darth Prey and who was thought to pose a threat to the entire galaxy, even in a weakened form. Even as Sidious continued to age after the reign of the Galactic Empire, he was still extremely powerful, and his powers only augmented from this. He was extremely skilled and powerful in the usage of the Force, with its power allowing him to sustain himself beyond the natural lifespan. At full power, Sidious's Force abilities proved so great that it required a large amount of highly powerful and skilled Force adepts to defeat him at one time. Sidious was able to create four storms, enormous vortices that could rip apart the surface of planets, tear holes through space and time itself, travel beings through time, and teleport him on other beings across the galaxy at whim. He was extremely powerful. The first time when he was encountering Anakin Skywalker, a descendant of Luke Skywalker, where he provided him with a room and didn't even sense Anakin's immense force potential, let alone realise he had an extremely high midichlorian count until then Jedi Master Dooku informed him of such when he meeting with him at dinner. The second time was regarded as Anakin Skywalker's son Luke, just before the Battle of Endor, where he was able to see Luke's presence on the Tidarium until Vader, breaking protocol, went over to his throne room to notify him of the development personally. Sidious was extremely skilled in the use of Force Lightning, and was known to use this both as a lethal attack and as a way of extremely torturing his enemies. Sidious was considered to be the most fine and proficient lightsaber duelist and force lightning adept in all of Sith history, surpassing Emperor Vitiate, possibly even the son of Mortis, Darth Nihilus, Jakarna Smur, and many other of the most powerful Sith Lords of all time. He could instantly reduce one or more people into charred husks, and at the peak of its power, he had the ability to instantly vaporize his opponents upon contact. Although his force lightning was generally blue in colour, it also emerged as purple at, during the peak of his power. Despite his formidable skill in many other aspects of the force, force lightning was arguably his trademark ability and the one that served him well against extremely dangerous combatants many times, either resulting in their defeat or near defeat. When cornered by Mace Windu in his office, in the Chancellor's office, Sidious viciously attacked him with the lightning, so it not nearly overwhelmed Mace Windu's immense light skills with Vepard, but also nearly caused Windu's saber to bend to Sidious's will when locked in combat with the latter's lightning. Once Anakin cut off Windu's hand, he fired the full strength of his lightning at Windu, torturing the Jedi for a few moments before using his lightning to throw Mace out the window, showing his skull. During his final death, it took the combined mind of all the Jedi to condemn his spirit to chaos, and when being thrown down the reactor shaft of the Death Star 2 by Darth Vader, Sidious's lightning was such that you could penetrate and see Vader's skull, perceiving it within the depths of his obsidian armor. 
Zeus's potency with Force Lightning was so powerful and immense, he was even able to catch Yoda off guard with it, throwing the Jedi Grandmaster into a war. And Yoda had extremely high w- reflexes, and later on in their duel was able to disarm him of his lightsaber with a powerful blast of it, despite the Grandmaster's attempt to grant it, and subsequently nearly overwhelmed Yoda's efforts to absorb it and use to diminish. However, it should be noted that Sidious used his height to his advantage by elevating his body in order to target the lightning above Yoda's to diminish defense, and Yoda ultimately succeeded in. In absorbing the attack, the resulting explosion was not only o- overwhelmed and blasted Sidious aside, but also separated Yoda from Sidious, allowing the Jedi to flee into exile on Dagobah. If it hadn't been for Darth Vader's shocking intervention and his own hubris, he would have succeeded in using his Force Lightning to torture Luke Skywalker to the death. Sidious' mastery of Force Lightning allowed him to also generate a shield made of lightning itself, which he utilised during his fight with Galen Merrick, also known as Starkiller, in conjunction with his Force Light, to temporarily retreat from the battle in order to have his Red Guards and Senate Guards attack Merrick, which proved to be an impenetrable to Merrick with either the Force or his lightsaber. Sidious' skills with telekinesis were incomprehensible, and it was stated by bystanders that while watching him, it was a blur of motion when he threw objects using the Force. Sidious was able to throw Senate pods at Yoda during their engagement. However, Yoda was able to redirect some back at the Dark Lord, annoying Sidious to a great deal. Likewise, he was skilled enough with telekinesis that he was able to remove Luke Skywalker's restraints while he barely even lifting a finger, a commonly needed elevation for Force wielders, when meeting face to face on the second Death Star with the young Skywalker. He could also easily overpower and fling both Maul and Savage Press to the window of the Mandalorian's castle, so strong enough to break the Mandalorian glass and keep them firmly pinned until he released them willingly. He was incredibly proficient in the Force Joke ability to the point where he can perform it to deadly effect without needing to see the target, even when in large distances away. I was shown by how he was able to completely subdue Tyrannus in a chokehold with a single hand gesture while many planets away, and later levitated and choked two Mandalorian guards to death, effortlessly, even before arriving in the location. After his first death, he demonstrated even greater skill with telekinesis, to the point where he could, with just a few moments of effort and strain, disintegrate a lightsaber in the hands of Leia Organa Solo without harming her. Zeus was a master of force speed, implementing it to run and walk normally into his fighting style and allowing him to move so quickly and augment his skill on the dark side that his opponents would often find themselves unable to react in time. He also had the ability of force flight, able to hover above the ground in standard gravity, as well as being capable of surrounding himself with a miniature store of malevolent force energy to slow down the movements of and torture or coordinate. After his first decade of apprenticeship under Darth Plagueis, one of the most powerful Sith Lords to ever live, Sidious possessed an exceedingly feral usage of force rage, demonstrated when he's assassinated the members of the Grand Pocturate and that organised his and his master's failed assassination attempt. Despite his powers, he was still defeated and eventually condemned to chaos by all the deceased Jedi. He was killed multiple times, most notably by Palpatine and by Luke Skywalker. Palpatine, despite this, was immensely powerful, but his political power certainly granted him more ability and proficiency than any dark side ability ever did. Palpatine's political power was such as he was able to manipulate cunningly and act as a father-grandfather figure to the entirety of the Star Wars galaxy as Supreme Chancellor Palpatine. Meanwhile, he was secretly cultivating a secret identity, Darth Sidious, the Dark Lord of the Sith. Darth Plagueis assisted in this, but Sidious mainly used this himself, using his political influence in the noble house of Palpatine in order to dominate his opponents. But how does this compare up to Darth Krayt? Darth Krayt's political power was not as great and marvellous as Palpatine, and he possessed no manipulation ability that could even be considered in the same league as Palpatine's own. Darth Krayt had the ability to completely govern and control every Sith Lord in the galaxy, had the ability to contend with Luke Skywalker, had enough political power that he could order any Imperial Knight or any subject of his to do his bidding. This, however, is not his strong suit, as Palpatine was able to subjugate an entire galaxy to his whim. So, with all the facts finally laid out before us, who is truly the most powerful? In short, I conclude that the most powerful is Darth Sidious. 
Darcidius, Emperor Palpatine, was not only acclaimed to be one of the greatest Sith Lords of all time, his feats being such as he was able to defeat Luke Skywalker in a lightsaber duel, being able to contend with Yoda in lightsaber combat and overpower him with the Force, being able to kill Mace Windu, one of the most powerful Jedi of all time, and being able to generate enormous hyperspace wormholes that would come to be known as Force Storm in some later years. Darcy used his manipulation tactics and abilities certainly granted him more proficiency and ability than any Dark Side ability ever did, allowing Sidious to completely gain control and subjugate the galaxy to his will, the only Sith in a thousand years to actually succeed in the Sith's eternal goal of dominating and subjugating the Jedi Order to their will. With that, I conclude that Darth Sidious, even though Darth Prey put up a valiant effort, is the more powerful of these two. Be sure to subscribe if you wish to ascend to the rank of master, and comment down below on which versus videos you wish to see recovered next. With that out of the way, Acolytes, I bid you farewell, and I hope you are not encased in Darth Prate's sinister force lightning today.